Hi students, so I'm going to go over the final exam for earth science. This final exam has 30 uh, multiple choice questions on it. Um, you will have uh, time to take your time through the final exam. Today we're going to go over 25 of the questions and the answers. Uh, which means that there's about five questions and answers that you will have never seen before. So uh, those ones are up to you. They're on the study guide that you can search those out and try to find them. But you will have to come to a proctored location to take your final exam and to get in and see the access code. So without taking too much longer, I'm just going to get started because uh, this recording has to be 15 minutes or less. So I want to just get on the questions so that you can get through it as fast as possible. Here's some of the general topics, but since this is singular, we won't be playing the game today. Uh, question, scientists use different types of telescopes to determine the properties of stars. Which answer best explains the reason for this? So you're going to be given a list of choices, and the answer is going to be stars emit different forms of energy, and so you would need different telescopes to see those. A blank is a region so dense that nothing, including light, can escape its gravity field. The answer to that one is a black hole. Blank are patterns of stars in the night sky. You maybe have looked at constellations. As protostars continue to contract, their cores become hotter and more dense until what process begins? The answer for that would be fusion. As nuclear fusion occurs in a star, different elements are formed. In blank, these elements are released and then are able to combine to form different objects in the universe. The answer to that one is supernova. Why can't carbon-14 be used to date dinosaur remains? The answer is because carbon-14 dating is only accurate to 50,000 years ago and dinosaurs were gone way before that. Which of the following is the most significant contributor to the formation of the Earth's early atmosphere? Out of those choices, it's going to be volcanic degassing. Um, to which of the following do geologists primarily attribute the evolution of complex life forms on the planet? And the answer there, the increase in atmospheric oxygen. You won't have this picture of carbon, but I wanted to put it there for you. Which of the following best describes the nucleus of an atom of carbon-14? Well, you can see the atomic mass is 14, and the atomic number is 6, which means the atomic number is the number of protons, and 14 minus 6 is 8, so there's 8 neutrons. Let's say you have a sample of 10 milligrams of carbon-14. So you have 10 milligrams of carbon-14. Its half-life is 5,700 years long. How many milligrams will be left after 5,700 years? Well, you'll take this 10 and cut it in half, and you're going to get the answer of 5, 5 milligrams. And then after another 5,700 years, you'll be down to 2.5 milligrams. Okay. A group of stars, gas, and dust held together by gravity is called a galaxy. Which of the following are the three main types of galaxies? The answers are elliptical, irregular, and spiral. What do colors tell us about stars? If, star, if a star is blue, then it is hotter than most stars. What is nuclear fusion and how does it make energy? Nuclear fusion is when smaller atomic nucle nuclei combine to form a larger nuclei and then some of that matter is transformed into energy. 
Uh, how is an isotope different from a standard form of a chemical element? What is an isotope? An isotope is just something that has a different number of neutrons. So the protons stayed the same, but the neutrons could be different. Okay, glaciologists retrieve an ice core from Greenland. They examine the gases trapped in bubbles of ice. They discover that 20,000 years ago, atm atmospheric carbon dioxide decreased from 280 to 180 per million volume. What effect would this decrease have on global climate? So basically, if they went from having a lot of carbon dioxide to not very much, carbon dioxide is what helps keep us warm, keep our planet warm. Sometimes it overheats our planet. Um, but if they decreased back then in carbon dioxide, then they would probably be colder. They probably would have gone colder and had something like an ice age. Radiometric dating is an absolute dating method in which the proportion of a radioactive parent isotope is compared to the proportion of a stable daughter isotope in a sample. How do stromatolites help scientists explain the formation of Earth's atmosphere? Well, stromatolites are mounds formed by photosynthetic organisms that added oxygen to Earth's oceans and eventually its atmosphere. So it tells us how the oxygen got added. One can conclude that Earth's internal layers resulted from which mechanism? The answer is differentiation. Why is it unlikely that Earth's early atmosphere was formed primarily by photosynthetic organisms? How do we know that it wasn't formed just by photosynthetic organisms? The Earth's early atmosphere was mostly carbon dioxide and photosynthetic organisms would have released oxygen. How does the wind cause mechanical weathering? Well, the wind blows sediment that breaks down rocks, and that causes the weathering. How is chemical weathering different from mechanical weathering? Well, in chemical weathering, new substances are formed, whereas mechanical weathering stuff just gets broken up into pieces, usually. What kind of rock would weather the fastest when exposed to acid? Um, you're going to be given a list, and the one that would um, dissolve the fastest would be limestone. We're going to do some chemical tests next semester um, and sh show you that further. Which is a type of chemical weathering? And you'll have to just pick out of a list. And in that list, hydration is your type of chemical weathering you're going to be looking for when something gets hydrated with water. A geologist finds a piece of granite that's covered in rust. What's happening to that piece of granite? It is becoming oxidized. And the final jeopardy, the matter that formed the Earth. Um, a student argues that Earth could have formed only after at least one previous generation of stars had come into existence and then died. Is this student correct? And the answer is yes, planets like Earth form from matter ejected into space when massive stars explode. So some stars exploded first, then Earth was able to form. Um, so that was actually 26 of the questions off of the final. So you only have four that are a surprise, but they shouldn't be too big of a surprise because there, there's um, information about it on the study guide. So make sure you watch this video several times that you're totally prepared for the final going into it. It affects, um, it accounts for 15% of your grade, so it's an important test. So uh, take care and good luck. I think you should watch this several times till you feel like you can answer along with me.